there is a lot of debate going on in the nation concerning uh, closing churches. Have we heard about it? Sometimes when you are discussing a particular topic and you have no understanding, avoid it. Let the experts discuss it. People are discussing about miracles and they themselves have never seen one come out of their service. What authority do you have to discuss about miracles when you have never seen one? What authority does an unmarried man have to guide you clearly about marriage? I mean, I agree, you can have a theory about it. But as long as you have not had a practice of the same, you do not have really authority to talk about it. Now, I have a different view that I want to give to the church of God in Kenya and even in the world. But I will begin with you. Praise God. Because if you don't understand your pastor, we are doomed. If you don't understand the calling of this church, we are doomed. I believe strongly that churches in Kenya, some churches in Kenya, should be closed. I believe so. And in my view, any church that does not conduct miracles and should be closed. That's my view. Why? I will explain. I will explain. Why are these churches existing? Listen, some of us were born and we became born again and joined churches where there were no miracles until we discovered what a real church is. We used to think a church is an assembly where a young man grows up and you go to a theological seminary, you study some kind of theology and then you come, you explain a few verses until we discovered that that was not the primary intention of Jesus to establish a church. He said in Matthew 16 verse 18, I will establish my church. So there is the church of the state and there is Christ's church. You know, you know there are many ministers who call themselves pastors in Kenya. And they are so convinced that they are pastors. But they have never seen a sick person getting healed. Hello? Yeah. They have never seen one. They, the only thing they know is that they need to establish schools and hospitals. And when we pray for the sick and they get healed, they have no understanding. They think we are faking. According to where some of us, you know the government does not know that many of us look at things and we keep quiet. Even these so-called pastors and reverends and I don't know fathers, mothers, whatever the name they call them. They, they think we are children. They think we are here to commercialize the gospel because we did not have an agenda in life. And therefore, we opened a commercial center where we raised funds. Far be it from the reality. The truth, however, is God called us to correct error that has been caused by these so-called churches. How can you have a something called a church, kind of a welfare or an organization that runs for centuries... And it has never conducted a single miracle. How do you call that thing a church? How? Where women come to church, they have never conceived. The only advice you can give us, um, a, a pastor, is for them to see a medical doctor. Why can't this individual go directly to a medical doctor? The medics are available. Why should pastors take the place of the doctors? A pastor is created by God to handle an issue that doctors are afraid to handle. We are not a referral point. People don't come here for us to refer them to doctors. They know where doctors are found. They know where hospitals are. By the time people come to church to ask us about a miracle 
is because they know that God has given us the mandate and the capacity to handle what those doctors cannot handle. When I see some people sit there and they are debating about us, why can't they tell us to debate about us? We know us. We know ourselves. I have never debated issues of Catholic sisters because I don't have an understanding how you can be a woman without a husband. I don't know how it is. I therefore avoid a topic that I have no information. But the one which I have information and I know you don't know about it. I cannot allow you to debate about it when I am available. Those so-called reverend bishops with their brown faces have no idea about what it means to raise a dead person back to life. But I know it. The, practic the practicalness of every scripture cannot be understood by religious movements. Can only be understood by church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please, when you see some of these debates on the media, don't be scared. The giants of knowledge always remain silent when quacks open their mouths. We walk by power. Praise God. Hallelujah. Believers shall be given power and authority. Power and and the power and authority we are given is to reverse everything that has been done by the devil. Luke 10, 19. Say power and authority. Power and authority. Say it again, power and authority. power and authority. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 7, the disciples were asked, by which power and whose name are you doing this? Sometimes when I see debates, I say, why can't they ask Apostle Nganga? To go and debate. Because what they are trying to debate, they are some of these so-called pastors. I've never seen even a demon scream. So when they see a demon scream, they think it's a fro cinema. All they did is what some of us did in the past: is go to class, you study theology, you get a GPA, and then you come speaking as an authority. I heard some of these people say. Like in the future, we must, the government must be able to confirm and ensure that every minister of the gospel goes to school. It's a lie. We who believe in the power of Christ, we are not going to allow those theological jargons to take over the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot allow that. The gospel is about power. Say power. We are not going to allow. I, I, I mean, some of these ministers, so-called ministers of the gospel, when they debate, they think they are more authoritative than we. They think they know much than we do. When we remain silent and not defending what we do in public, that does not mean that we are sinning. It doesn't mean that. It simply means that we are wise enough not to debate with ignorant pastors. Because in Swahili they say, as you do a mahana, hambiwi. Richara ne richara. Why should I take my time to debate with people who are where I was? I was where I was where they are. I used to say every miracle is fake. Now, when Jesus is using me to do the miracles, should I again say the same? No. The true miracle of Christ always faces problems. You know, when Christianity started, it had a problem because of miracles. There was a religious group, the Jewish people believed that nobody should do a miracle. That's why the disciples are being asked by which power are you doing this? In other words, these things have not been happening. We have been peaceful. We have been in, in the synagogue, in the temple with the people who are crippled. How do you people go to a temple and outside the temple is sitting a person for many years who can't walk? You go in, you come out every day. A 
and when somebody comes and says, now in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, then you question the authority. And, and, and they say, we are brainwashing people. For them, they are not brainwashing. They, they, they are, I don't know, heart washing or liver washing. Those of us who do miracles, we are brainwashing. For them, I don't know what they are doing. It's heart washing, liver washing, intestine washing. What are they doing? Why, why, why do some people consider themselves superior to the rest of us? Who told them that we never went to class? When they say that every church should be registered, I'll be registered by a person with a degree, and that we must be under a certain body. Which body? And this is not about the government of William Ruto. It's about pastors who do not have capacity to do miracles. This has nothing. And let me put it clear. When you hear people say that churches should be registered, never should you have a blame on this part of the government. It is ministers of the gospel who do not who have, don't have capacity to do any miracle. And their focus and target is the churches that have been enabled to do miracles. So because they know that once you register, it is very difficult for some of these churches to be registered because they know they will be recruited to sit on the board that will be registering. The work of God, you don't fight by using the law. You fight by using the spirit. That's not how we fight. You know why God brings up new churches is when old churches fail. God never brings something new if the old is working. Praise God. <laughs> God never brings something new if he's not interested in undoing the old. He brings up something when he's ready to cause the other one to disappear. That's why the new churches are coming up every day. Even this week, I am sure, God will have to bring another church. Praise God. Praise him again. Hallelujah. In John chapter 14 verse 12. Jesus said. Those who believe in me. The things I do. They also shall do. And even greater than this. Shall they do. Greater. The things I do. What are the things that Jesus does? Acts 10 verse 8. And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. That he went everywhere doing good and healing those. Healing those. So when Jesus says, the things I do, you also shall do. And greater. It means you have to find out what did he do. And I found out he healed the sick. He cast out the demons. He raised the dead. He did everything good. And what did he say? He said, the things I do, you also shall do even greater. Meaning we are going to heal the sick in a greater way. We are going to raise more dead people in Jesus name. We are going to cast out demons even from the same church leaders. We will heal them and set them free. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Is this congregation with me? Listen. The kingdom of God, according to 1 Corinthians 4.20, is not a place of talking. No, it's a place of power. For the kingdom of God is not in mere talk, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20. And 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of power. It's a demonstration of the power of the spirit. Praise God. A church is not a place where people go to sit. To be preached to. No, it's a theater of demonstration. According to Jesus, preaching is not supposed to take place in the church. He says, you go preach to them. You go not that you bring them to preach. You go. Go preach to them. After you preach to them. Then bring them to teach them. And in the process of teaching them. You demonstrate the power of the spirit. 
Praise God. So Jesus, you go to the villages, you go to the streets, you preach to them. And then when they are preached, they are converted. You come and explain to them the essence of their conversion and the power and authority. You go. How do you assemble people every Sunday and every Saturday just to preach to them? People come so that the power of God can solve their issues. That's why they congregate. Praise be to God. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 and Acts 14 verse 3 the Bible confirms that miracles are a confirmation of the presence of grace and the power of God. Anybody trying to castigate miracles? Just the way you don't understand how we do miracles. It's the same way we don't understand how you don't do. 